Hi, Dave Anderson here at The Camera Company. I'm with my friend and colleague, Georgina. Hi. And what we're gonna do is talk a little bit about depth of field. Depth of field is a relationship between the focal length, the distance from your subject, and your aperture. So I have a 50 millimeter 1.4 uh, lens here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take three different pictures of Georgina, one at two foot, one at five foot, and one at seven foot. We're gonna take all three of those pictures at an F1.4. Then we're gonna take three more pictures at F8, same two foot, five foot, and seven foot, and show you what we get. We're going to demonstrate how depth of field works. So you ready? Yeah, let's do it. So I've taken the series of pictures of Georgina and loaded them here. What I've done is I've cropped them all to be a relatively the same size so we can see the impact that our adding distance between Georgina and where I was standing taking the picture will have on our depth of field. So in this first image, you can see that, again, I'm using a 50 millimeter f1.4 lens, and I'm at two feet from Georgina. Her eyes are in focus, but her earring is, is all blurry and out of focus. So we have a very, very shallow depth of field here. Now, depth of field, again, is a function of the distance from your subject, the focal length of the lens, and your aperture. In this series, all we are doing is adding distance. So now what I've done is I've stepped back to five feet and taken that picture of Georgina, and you can see the picture on the right now is from five feet, that her eyes are in focus as well as her earring is in focus. So if you're shooting this as a portrait, you would probably want to be back a little farther because it would then show your, your subject in a better light. It would give, give you more focus from her tip of her nose back to her earring, and that's her face. That's what we want to see in a, in a nice portrait. And then in the third shot, I stepped back to seven feet, and I purposely left a little bit of the background in, and you can see that it, we still have really nice bokeh where the background is blurry, but it's starting to become a little more focused. Now the second function of depth of field, again, is aperture. So I repeated the same series using an f8. So I've stopped the lens down and here's our two foot exposure. And you can see that her earring is in focus, the tip of her nose is in focus, her eyes are in focus. So at f8, up close to Georgina, that looks really good. When we step back to five feet, you can now see that we've added quite a bit of depth of field because behind Georgina, we had her standing in front of a rack of greeting cards. The greeting cards are starting to become in focus. We have a tripod display in the background that's starting to become in focus. So now we've gained a lot of depth of field. And then finally, when I go back to seven feet, you can see that you can almost read the type on the, uh, the tripod uh, display as well as the greeting cards are in sharper focus. So the two functions are, number one, the distance, and number two, our aperture. So let's look at what happens when we look at Georgina side by side with f1.4 or f8 at two feet. You can see how much depth of field f8 gives you at a very close distance. When we step back out to seven feet, the depth of field is increased exponentially. Take a look at the one on the left, the f1.4, the greeting card is, is is still blurry. Georgina's face is nice and in focus. The one on the right at F8, we've got nice focus on Georgina's face as well as back into the greeting cards, the tripod display, and those items are five to seven feet behind her. So again, to sum up, depth of field is a function of the focal length of the lens, and in this case we used a 50 millimeter lens. Our aperture and we just demonstrated f1.4 and f8, and then distance from your subject. As you increase your distance, the depth of field is going to increase also. So practice this and come up with some of your own experiments. Learn how your lenses react under different conditions, and you will be the master of depth of field in the near future. Thank you, Georgina. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, as we move back from our subject at the same aperture, we were able to gain some depth of field. We hope this tip was useful. If so, please follow us on Facebook.
subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Thanks again. Thank you.